Yo guys, it's Mighty, and in this video, I want to talk about the new fingertip grip mouse from G Wolves. This is the HTR 8K. The HTR is a really odd shape. A lot of people would compare this to a golf ball, since it doesn't really fit the traditional format of a fingertip grip mouse, since it doesn't have flat sides, and it's also very elongated and also very rounded at the base. I'll be directly comparing this mouse to the HSK Pro Ace which I do have and did main for about a month and really enjoyed it. But this mouse didn't really fit my grip style, and it wasn't something that I was really interested in and wasn't really looking forward to manning, and I don't see myself really using it in the future. Let's go over everything about this mouse. G-Wolves did send this mouse out to me for review, but all my thoughts and opinions are of course my own, and they have no influence over that. Starting out with the packaging, the packaging is amazing. If you haven't seen this, this is more of a holographic design that really pops out of the top. I haven't seen any other company do this and I really like what they're doing with these boxes. When you do get the package, there will be a few things that do arrive outside of the main box. One of the things is a bubble wrap package that looks like this. Inside is their own sleeve, a little art and holographic print, as well as four containers of their molding clay. I didn't really use this molding clay, even though most people that I heard that have this mouse and that have tried it do use the molding clay just because it's not an intuitive mouse due to the shape not being intuitive to grip and mostly uncomfortable. I wanted to try the mouse for what it really was and didn't want to add anything that would change the natural shape. Even though the clay doesn't come with any extra price and it does come with it right out of the box. The mouse does come in a hard shell carrying case like this. I really do like this carrying case and I think it's really nice to add and to provide for a mouse like this. Inside the carrying case you do have two USB cables, one for charging the mouse, the other one for the dongle. You also have the sleeve that the mouse comes in. Two different types of carrying ways, one is a strap, the other one's a band, and you have the dongle connected to one of these cables. Next up inside the box is something that looks like this. It's a little pouch containing a few grips, skates, and just other stuff for the mouse. Some paperwork as well, and the covers for the bottom of the mouse if you don't want to get the insides dirty. I also did end up putting the grips on the mouse itself, since the coating on this mouse is literally impossible for me to grip to, and I just slip off when I was playing on it, so I just had to put on these grips. I also don't really like white mice, so just having this mouse in white was a kind of a turn off for me, so I did try to put on the black grips as much as possible, and just cover up as much of the white as I could. I just want to jump in here and say that a few weeks ago, Wheezy and I, along with one of my IRL friends, we started a peripheral rental company called NexusGear.Live. It's a basically a company where you can rent out different mice and mouse pads once per month, and it's a $20 rental fee and you return at the end of the month. I would greatly appreciate it if you did go check out the website. I do have a few mice and a few mouse pads up right now, and more will be added in the future. So go check that out, and if you care to rent out anything, it'd be really much appreciated. On to the rest of the video. Coming over to the mouse itself, it does have kind of angled clicks. Once they start at the top, they do taper off pretty harshly towards the bottom. And I did find that my fingers were going a little bit more forward when I was gripping towards the front of the mouse. But if you grip next to the scroll wheel like I normally do, there's no real issue with that. The sides also are very uncomfortable for me to grip. I just didn't like how my pinky fingers were being pulled back, and my thumb was mostly fine even though it was also feeling like it was getting pulled towards the end of my mouse. Due to the slantedness of the sides, when I first got this mouse I did feel it was more of a claw grip mouse. I know that doesn't really make sense due to the actual size and the shape of this, but for me I just wanted to bring my palm in since the sides were a little bit pushing my fingers back and weren't really giving me that grip I needed. Once I did add the grips, it was mostly fine since my fingers weren't sliding backwards, but it still was a slightly uncomfortable grip and it didn't and it did take me a few days to get used to. The back hump of the mouse is also very peculiar. I don't understand the need to add basically a golf ball at the end of the mouse since you aren't supposed to put your palm or hands on it. You're just supposed to put your fingertips, so there's no real reason for that from my point of view, and it just isn't intuitive and doesn't really make one the mouse look good, or two really nice to grip either. Since it is a little bit longer, I can't pull it back as much as I would like to, and as much as I do with my HSK Pro. The stock skates on the mouse were also a little bit too slow for me, so I did end up swapping them out originally to J Dots, and then to these skates. Overall, the Dots made this mouse feel a little bit nicer to use since it was a little bit faster. 
but due to the weight of this, even with grips and the dot skates, it did come in at 31 grams, which was pretty surprising for me. When I'm used to a fingertip grip mouse being 26, which is what my HSK Pro is, I didn't really like the added weight that this came in at. When directly comparing the size of these two mice, you can definitely tell that the HSK Pro is much smaller than the HDR. It's about 75% of the overall length of the mouse, and also does feel much smaller and much narrower in hand. The HDR is a lot wider even though it does taper in, and it's overall not as nice to grip since the HSK also flares out at the sides a little bit towards the end and a little bit and it locks my fingers in when I do pull the mouse backwards. The clicks also on the HSK are much lower than the clicks on the HDR, and due to this being a fingertip centric mouse, I do like the lower click height of the HSK. And also since it is shorter, I do have much greater of a distance I can pull the mouse back and I will never have the mouse actually touching my palm or the top of my fingers, like here where, my, where the HDR actually does when I do pull it backwards, since the top of the hump does touch my fingers. Some people may like this because they like to do a fingertip grip like this where they have their top knuckles sitting at the top of the mouse. But for me, as someone who just uses traditional fingertip grip, I just don't like how this shape feels at all in hand. I would much rather use the HSK Pro, and I think this is going to be my main fingertip grip mouse in the future and for what I'm going to use if I do want a fingertip grip mouse. I've looked into PCB swapping the HDR into the HSK Pro since it does have 8K as well as it uses USB-C to charge, and if I can pull it off, I think this mouse would be one of the best. The side buttons might not necessarily work, but I wouldn't mind that since this is one of the best fingertip grip mouse shapes on the market right now for me. I just love it a lot. Overall, would I recommend the HDR to people? Probably not. It's really expensive. Far more than anything you can get from Razer or Logitech or even WL mouse for the price. Even though what it does come with is a lot. The shape of this mouse also does not fit many people since they do have to add clay. And I think that's just not a great thing from a mouse like this that's priced at such a high range. For the overall enthusiasts, they might add the clay, but to the average user, they'd see no point in fiddling around with that. So if you are someone who wants to experiment with shapes, go ahead and try this mouse. But if you're not, and you just want something to stick to and not really tink around with, this is definitely not the mouse to get. I hope that G-Wolves does release an 8K version, a USB-C version of the HSK Pro in the future, since they did with the HTS Plus, this is the 8K. So I'm really hoping they do that since that will be my favorite fingertip mouse and the fingertip mouse that I will recommend to a lot of people. If you guys do want to check out either of these mice, I will have the link down in the description below. You can use code MIGHTY for 10% off at checkout and it is a referral link so it does support me as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, peace.